Father's Day, Mother's Day. It could either be a happy day or a sad day. Happy day if your parents are still alive, and happy day if your parents are Christians and good parents took care of you. Happy day that if you're able to go and tell them, I love you, Dad. But sad day if they're not alive. Like my dad passed away, his memories live on. Ms. Rhonda's dad, four years ago, laid him to rest. On this day, he's in heaven. Probably he's happy with his wife and living together again in heaven. And maybe there are those who experienced a father who was not like a father. Absentee father, abusive father, arrogant father. So they may not have good memory. So it is a good and a bad day. Yesterday, I was preaching at Asian Indian Church. I told the background of the story of Father's Day. Sonora, one woman, that's her name, in Spokane, Washington. She fought for 40 years to get the Father's Day in. If anything good that President Nixon signed, it was the Father's Day Declaration in 1972. Woodrow Wilson started. No one continued, but she fought. 40 days for Father's Day. She fought it because her father, after the Civil War, his wife passed away, so he raised six kids, including Sonora. She thought highly of her father. She fought to have this father's memorial, thanks to her. So we think of fathers all over the world today. Regardless, this message is for all the fathers, would-be fathers, and children of all ages. Whether you're small or a grown-up kid like me, this is for you. Now I want to read something humorous first. The world according to dad. I don't know who wrote this, but it would make sense. These are the words that most dads have said to their children sometime or the other. Here it is. Let me read that to you. Quiet. I'm watching the ball game. Bring back all the change now. How should I know? Ask your mother. I'm not made out of money. When I was at your age, I walked five miles to school one way. You heard that, right? And who is paying the bills around here anyway? Fathers. If you break your le leg, do not come running to me. You know, that's when mama comes handy. All right? Do not put your feet on the furniture. Your mother would kill you. Daniel, that's the thing. They got a new furniture at home. So, <laughs> And uh, quit playing with your food. Sure, I'm sure all the fathers said that to their kids. Yeah, well, fathers, and then be quiet. Can't you see how I'm, I'm trying to think? <laughs> Dad, and father said, why? Because I said so. <laughs> if you do not quit, I'm going to call your mother. <laughs> you better get the junk picked up before your mother comes in there. And I know I said this to my children. Just wait till you have kids of your own. <laughs> That's humor stuff. But here's the stat I want to give it to you. That would make you think. Fatherless and absentee fathers. That's the title of that. This is true stats. Fatherless and absentee fathers' daughters are 53% more likely to marry as teenagers. Fatherless and absentee fathers' daughters are 11% more likely to have children as teenagers. Fatherless and absentee fathers' daughters are 164% more likely to have an out-of-wedlock birth. Fatherless and absentee father's daughters have a 92% higher divorce rate than girls raised with dads at home. Fatherless and absentee father's sons are 35% more likely to experience marital failure. 
Fatherless and absentee fathers' sons are 300% more likely to become incarcerated in state juvenile institutions. Fatherless and absentee fathers make up, fathers' children make up 70% of all juvenile in state institutions. That is true. I visited them. Fatherless and absentee fathers' children are twice as likely to drop out of high school. Fatherless children have only half the chance of being high achievers. Here's the stats. According to National Association of Elementary School Principals, 33% of children from two-parent families become high achievers. But now, while only 17% of the children from single-parent homes are absentee father homes, achieve high. Fatherless and absentee father children are 50% more likely to have learning disabilities. Again, according to National Center for Health Statistics, fatherless abs and absentee father children are anywhere from 100 to 200% more likely to have emotional and behavioral problems. Fatherless and absentee fathers, young adults are twice as likely to need and receive psychological help. And finally, according to our national hospitals, nation's hospitals, 80% adolescents admitted for psychiatric reasons come from fatherless and absentee families. These are heartbreaking stats that I read to you. Satan is out there to destroy the fathers in our land. He's after the fathers. If you're a father, I want you to pay attention to me. Especially attention to the scriptures I'm going to read. It is important. But first, I want to tell you a true story. I'm sure you've heard this daredevil by the name of Nick Valanda. His picture is up there. He's a daredevil. He walks tightrope, high wires, across volcanoes, waterfalls, and buildings, canyons, you name it. He's a daredevil. The entire family is a daredevil family. When we were fighting this virus last year, and this man, on March the 4th, 2020, he walked across 180 feet over a volcano in Nicaragua. It's called Messiah in Nicaragua. And this guy took 31 minutes and 23 seconds to walk with no safety net underneath of him. Surrounded by noxious gas, high wire, crazy. That's why I call him. Here's another picture. Yeah, another picture of him walking right over this volcano. I know that he's attached by the wire. If he falls, if the wire snaps, he's done. That's the craziest thing that I've ever seen. Now, a few years before that, I watched that one. I'm sure some of you would remember that. This guy walked across Niagara Falls. It's about 1,500 feet, 172 above the falls. And it was a misty night. It was not even during the day. It was live on ABC. You know, I, I'm scared of heights. Ask my wife. I can't, I, I can't watch that kind of a stuff. So I said, this guy is crazy. I'm not going to watch this guy walking across the Niagara Falls. Have you been there? I've been there from Canada to the United States border. But then, just before he got onto the rope, ABC interviewed him. They asked him this question. He said, aren't you nervous and scared, Nick? He said, yes, concerned about the mist and darkness, wetness, but not scared. And he said something that made me watch it. He said, but I'm covered by the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. I am covered by the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. The reporter shut his mouth. 
And that was a great statement. After that, oh, I'm going to watch this guy. Even then I started flipping because I can't watch things like that. But then he got to the other side. Guess who was the first person to greet him? His daddy. I don't know whether they got his picture or not. Probably do. His father. His father was there. And uh, ironically, it was sometime right before Father's Day, he said, Dad, you're a great father to me. I love you in the Lord. I love you, Dad. Great statement to a father. The whole family is crazy, in my opinion. They all walk on hot, hot, in a high wire and uh, kind of tightrope stuff. But one thing that attracts me towards them they are witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So what he said, Nick Belanda, I love you. And I got that as a topic today. I love you. So that's the title of my sermon here in your bulletin. You would find it. I love you, Dad. And turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Proverbs 4, 1. Hear, O sons and daughters, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. It's a command. Daughters and sons, hear your father's instruction and be attentive that you might gain insight. I'm going to preach about our Heavenly Father and try to make a comparison between the characteristics of Heavenly Father to earthly father. Listen to me, fathers. Our children would never understand and know Heavenly Father unless they see the character of Heavenly Father in you. So when you're listening to me, I want you to do me a favor. Fathers, if you're listening to me, if you agree with me and say, yes, that's me, I want you to say, praise God and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Children, if you're listening and agree with me, that's my dad. You would want to tell your dad, I love you, dad. I thank the Lord for you. Perhaps, Dad, you're not the kind of person that I'm going to preach about that you might want to ask God's forgiveness and draw close to God. Children, you might say, no, that's not my dad. If that being the case, you still say, I love you, Dad. But would you please pray for your dad? I want you to do that. So having that in mind, the very first character of God the Father is this, Isaiah 61.10. Isaiah 61.10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress. And a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Now, our Heavenly Father clothes His children with garments and robe. Now, the garment in the Old Testament and New Testament days is just a piece of cloth that covers your body from nakedness. Ordinary clothes. Now, the robe is something different. It's called mantle, a cloak. If you remember that Joseph in the Old Testament had this mantle, cloak, robe, a special robe, robe of high honor that his father bought for Joseph. He's a favored one. And at the same time, you could recall when Elijah was taken up to heaven. His cloak, mantle, fell on Elisha. That talks about honor. Elisha became the prophet. Keeping that interpretation in mind, you would understand when Heavenly Father clothes, 
clothes his children with garment of salvation, it means that God clothed our naked sinfulness by killing an animal in the Garden of Eden and clothed Adam. The same scenario is applied to the cross of Christ. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus, He covered you. He covered your sinful nakedness. And you're saved. That's why it's called garment of salvation. He covers you. Heavenly Father also does something else. That is the robe of righteousness. It's a special garment. Just like Nick Landa said, I'm covered by the righteousness, righteousness of God through Jesus Christ my Lord. He covers you with His righteousness because you and I have no righteousness in us. You're human beings. In short, Heavenly Father sent His Son Jesus to cover you and me, fathers, with His blood, salvation, with His righteousness, because we're, not, we're no good. So, fathers, if you are saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus, if you're covered by God's righteousness, then you can say, thank you, Lord. If not, Seek Jesus. Ask God's forgiveness. Come to the Lord Jesus. Get saved. Because that's a quality of Heavenly Father. Children, if your father's a saved man, he is covered by the righteousness of God because he's not perfect. You're supposed to say, I love you, Dad. I thank the Lord for you. And you mean it. If not, still say, I love you, Dad. But pray for him that he would come to know the Lord Jesus. The second quality of Heavenly Father is this. Our Heavenly Father highly esteems His children with love and compassion. Are you with me? Heavenly Father, He highly esteems His children with love and compassion. I want to read the scripture. Psalm 103, 8 through 17. Bear with me and listen to the scripture. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Underscore that. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is for everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. A beautiful passage. Our Heavenly Father does not deal with us according to our sin. He does not harbor in His heart. You know, we fathers, we fall short of it. But Heavenly Father's quality is, He said, I'm not going to think about that anymore. He forgives and removes our sins. He said, I've forgiven you. I'm looking at you with love and compassion. Fathers, you and I are supposed to have that quality. My dad had that. If my dad had to remember every bad thing as a teenager that I've ever done, 
I don't think I'll be standing here and preaching. He was a man with love and compassion. And the Heavenly Father's compassions fail not. Good old song. Great is thy faithfulness. Children of all ages, let me ask you this. If your father shows you love and compassion unconditionally, he's a man covered with the garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness. And you need to say, you must say, I love you, Dad, and the Lord. I thank the Lord for you. If not, say, I love you, Dad, but also say, I'm going to pray for you. There are some dads having difficult time in showing that unconditional love and compassion because perhaps your teenage kids or older kids gave you some trouble, things that you never imagined, and you're harboring that inside your heart. Think about Heavenly Father and His quality. I want you to have it, Dad. Thirdly, here's another quality. Our Heavenly Father defends His children from injuries and abuses. He defends. Sort of a security net. Let me read uh, Psalm 56, 16 and 17. But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the days of my distress. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you. For you, O oh God, are my fortress, the God who shows me steadfast love. King David sang this beautiful song. Pardon me. Every song that King David sang in the book of Psalm has a background. And this particular Psalm 59, like most other Psalms, has a background. You have to go to 1 Samuel chapter 19 and 20 and read that. Even though David killed Goliath, victoriously defeated the Philistines, the king of the land, Saul, did not like him. Saul, many times, wanting to kill this man, David. He, David was a warrior. He was protect, protecting the land of Israel. King Saul grew jealous. He wanted to kill David. David spent Ten years in one of those caves in Serengeti, in Israel. That's the name of that place, Serengeti. My wife and I had been there at the foothills of the very cave mountain. No one can climb up there except mountain goats. I don't know how in the world that he climbed up there. He spent time, ten years, in those caves. At one time when Saul thought he's going to pin him down with his javelin, David ducked and escaped. In the cave, fearful. Well, that's where he is writing this psalm saying that here is my heavenly father. He's my fortress. He's my strength. He's my refuge. And his steadfast love is going to keep me safe. He had no human assurance. At one point, he had about 3,000 people surrounded that particular mountain. They couldn't find David. God protected him. That's the kind of protection children is looking in these days from their dads. Here's a research, or I shouldn't say a, an assignment, given by a sixth grade teacher to sixth graders in California. She said, I, I want you to write a wish list. Would you do that for me? So all the sixth graders pulled out 
piece of paper. And the teacher said, I wish blank. I want you to write quickly. Everybody wrote that. And teacher collected everything and she thought that she would read, I wish I have a big screen TV in my room. I wish I would have an iPad. I wish I would have the latest iPhone. You know, all these sixth graders these days, they think about gadgets all the time. I wish all these things. But to the teacher's surprise, some kids said, I wish my parents would not fight. I wish my father comes home. I wish I had one father and one mother. That's sad from a sixth grader. In other words, fathers never spend time together expressing their positive thoughts. They never consistently discipline their children. They were not there when the kid was going through crisis. They were not there to encourage. When the kid was in a cave-like situation, the father was not their fortress and strength. Kids of our days are writing, I wish my father's home. Here's another stat. These are true. I want to give it to you. 550% increase in violent crimes from kids or teenagers, young adults. Split homes, fatherless homes, absentee father homes. 400% increase in illegitimate births. 200% increase in teen pregnancies. 300% increase in teen suicide. I told you about juvenile. And latest, I got another research. I don't have a number yet. I'm still looking for it. This Antifas and those weird movements on the street trying to loot and trying to kill people, trying to even... You know, knock an old lady in New York to die, injured. I don't know whether she's alive or not. And on the other day, I saw a guy pulling his gun over a little boy in the middle of the street. I'm doing research on all these people that are violent today. Most of them come from single family homes. No father. Absentee father. Or father who is incarcerated. A father who's already in violent lifestyle. These kids. Fathers, do you protect your children? Just like David felt in the cave. My heavenly father is my fortress. Are you the fortress for your children? If you're not the fortress, the kids are going to do all these crazy stuff. And I bet my life on it when I finish my research, I'll let you know this Antifa. I know they don't have families. They come from broken homes. If they're from good father and mother home, they won't be there out on the street. Are your children out on the street? I don't think so. Because you do have a good home. Godly home. And we're supposed to provide that security. Fathers, let me ask you this. If you are providing security for your children, you're the fortress, you're the refuge, just like David, then you would say, Lord, I thank you. You're covered by the garment of salvation, washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus, and the robe of righteousness like Nick Valanda. Children, if you have that kind of a father, needless to say, you would say, I love you, Dad, give him a hug, and tell the Lord, I praise you, Lord, for my dad. On the other hand, if you don't have a father like that, would you say, I love you, dad, and pray for him? Fathers, would you seek forgiveness? It's still not too late. The fourth quality of a heavenly father. Our heavenly father gives attention to the weakest child. Here it is. Isaiah forty eleven. He will tend his flock... Like a shepherd, he will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. A heavenly father's desire is that no one should perish. In the New Testament, we think of him as a good shepherd. He goes after the one who is not only weak, but 
a vagabond, a runaway kid. That's Heavenly Father. A father would carry his child when the child is at his or her lowest point in life. I know, Dad, it is not easy. But when you're able to go after the kid that went astray and carry the kid on your bosom, come back home, that's a godly quality. If you have that quality, say, thank you, Lord, I praise you. Children, if your father is someone like that, what you can say, Dad, I love you in the Lord. I owe a lot. You're there for me. Give him a hug today. If not, pray for your dad. I know there are some children listening to me this morning probably don't want to hear about dad. I have a story to share with you, true story. About 25 years ago, just a couple of years after I became a pastor at First Baptist Church of Savage, I went through the role, the directory of the church. Just wanted to see how many people come to church, and there's one person's name. Appears over and over again, never seen her in the church. She lives just a few blocks away from the church on Windermere. And that's just about a block away from my house. And I thought I'll go and see her, a widow. Her name, Helen Ray. Went over to see Helen. She had never seen me for the first time and knocked on the door. And she said, I heard you're the new pastor. Come on in, have a seat. That's a wonderful southern lady. She's a southern transplant. She said, I'm going to bring you some home-baked cookies and some coffee. I said, you don't have to do that, ma'am, but thank you. Anytime you say home-baked, I'm here. So she went into the kitchen. I was looking around in the living room. All I could find in the living room was red-haired dolls, all male dolls just saturated the room with the red-haired male little dolls. That caught my attention. And then when she came up with cookies and coffee and I was uh, relishing that home-cooked cookie, I said, Miss Helen, uh, I'm going to ask you a question and hope you don't mind. What is it, Pastor Paul? He said, there must be something special about this red-haired dolls that you have all around the wall here. She started crying. I apologize. I'm so sorry, Miss Helen. I asked you. Maybe it's a wrong question. Forgive me. Don't worry about that. You don't have to give the explanation. She said, give me a minute. Caught her breath. I never shared this with anyone else, but I'm going to share this with you. I heard so much about you since you came into this town, but I want to tell you this. I had a red-haired boy. He was only 14 years of age. He committed suicide in the woods near the lake. And I can forget that. He committed suicide because my husband, his father, was abusive, arrogant. He never loved his son. He couldn't take it. Now, I couldn't forgive my husband. He's dead and gone. I cannot forgive my child. So, Miss Helen, I'm here to tell you there's a Heavenly Father who loves you and loved your child. She, uh, then I asked her, why, why can't you come to church? No, I won't come to that church. Why? She said, when I brought this up, when he committed suicide, what I heard from, quote and unquote, seasoned spiritual people of that church said my son would go to hell because he committed suicide. Why would I come to a church? And I preached to her that morning, saying that, who knew thief on the cross before dying, telling the Lord Jesus, remember me when you get into paradise? Nobody heard that, except John. 
Those people that are far away beat on their breasts, like you read in the scripture, walked away. They never heard it. For them, that thief deserves de death. I want to tell you, Miss Helen, the last minute before your son passed away, he went to church, did he? Perhaps he called on the Lord. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. So no one has the right to say that your son would go to hell. She gave me a big old hug. I don't know whether she is dead or alive. She moved to Virginia, sold the house in Savage. She was up in age back then, probably in her 70s. And I don't think she's alive today. But what I learned from this story, there are dads that are arrogant, autocratic, absentee, aloof, and angry. Children, you don't have a good example. Father, if you are all of these arrogant, autocratic, absentee, aloof, angry, I want you to confess your sins and come to the Lord Jesus. You should be covered with the garment of salvation. Jesus, through His blood, wants to cover you. Same Lord would like to give you the robe, the highly esteemed robe, so you can be seated on the throne with the Lord Jesus when you get to heaven. When you get that, you won't have any of these qualities. So some of your children may not have good memory. Here's about verse. Even though your mother and father forsake you, God said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. He's your heavenly father. I'm going to close with comforts to dad. Fathers, I want you to be comforted. There are times you cannot control what goes on in your children's life. My father could not control me as a teenager. Took a thousand rupees. It's equivalent to about 100,000 these days. This was way back when, 45 years ago. Left home. This man couldn't control my dad. What he did to this day, remember, he started praying. In the New Testament, we find a dad. His name is Jairus. I preached about him last night. He had only daughter, 12 years of age, dying. He couldn't control what was going on in her life. But he decided he would go to the Lord Jesus. So fathers, if you have an, a child that is out of control, come to the Lord. If you have a child who has forgotten the values that you instilled, come to the Lord Jesus. If you have a rebellious kid, God will comfort you. You did your job. If you're dealing with personal and spousal abuse, I want you to come to the Lord Jesus. No father should receive such a dread, dreadful news like Jairus received. Jesus delayed. He received the news. His daughter's dead. Jesus delayed. And I believe, reading that over and over again, Jesus, I think, purposely delayed. So through Jairus, he could give comfort to all the fathers, saying, there are things out of control in your life. You can't do anything, but I'm there for you. The Lord is there for you, fathers. Do not be overwhelmed. There's another point. There are things absolutely and totally beyond your ability to do in your family. So do not be overwhelmed. You cannot change anything anyway. Just give it to the Lord Jesus. He's there for you. Simply trust Him is the next point. No matter how large the task is, no matter how difficult the situation is, I want you to trust Jesus. Fathers, I want to encourage you. Never lose hope. See, hope 
is the glue that holds the fabric of life. Hope in the Lord. Waiting on the Lord is never the waste of time. You're a wonderful Christian father, but your children are not. Hope in the Lord. It would never go waste. Finally, with faith, the impossible becomes possible. What do you think to be impossible would become possible? Have faith in God. That's, kind of, that's a kind of an encouragement I want to give you, dads. I'll remind you, are you protecting your children? Are you covered with the garment of salvation, robe of righteousness? Are you the kind of dad who would forgive and throw away? Praise God for you. If not, come to Jesus, dads. That's the starting point. God will give you strength. General Norman Schwarzkopf, a great general. We all watched Desert Storm in 1991. I was teaching in a Christian school at the time. This man had a decisive win in the Middle East. This man came back and he was being celebrated in our land. He was asked a very important question. General Norman Schwarzkopf. The question was, hey General, what would you like to be the epitaph, the inscription on your tombstone when you die? You have accomplished so much. Great General, our country owes a lot to you. This man answered, I put it up on the screen, I want this thing. A father who loved his family and a soldier who served his country. Great quote. You know, when I die, that's what I want. A father who loved his family and a preacher who preached the word of God. Father, what would you like to have on your epitaph? General Norman Schwarzkopf said it so beautifully. Again, a father who loved his family, a soldier who served his country. Are you like Heavenly Father? Children, honor your father. Fathers, do not be discouraged if your child is a rebellious kid. Because Jesus said, trust me. Jairus could not control what was happening in his daughter's life, but he trusted Jesus. All the fathers out there, I bless you. And I pray that you would emulate the characteristics of Heavenly Father so we all can rejoice. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Every eyes closed, heads bowed. Wherever you are, fathers, if you're not born again, if you're not covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus, His garment, His robe, I want you to come to the Lord Jesus. That's a starting point. I pray that you would get the qualities of the Heavenly Father. You may be arrogant, autocratic, absentee, aloof, angered person. Confess your sins to the Lord Jesus. Fathers, I want you to come to know the Lord Jesus. Kids are looking for security. Kids are looking for example. Kids are looking for compassionate fathers. Kids are looking for saved fathers. If you are one, Oh, thank the Lord for it. And yet, you don't have the children saying, I love you, Dad. They're not there. I want you to know, do not be overwhelmed. Go to the Lord Jesus. He would comfort you. Children, 
Honor your dad. If you don't want to think about your dad because he's not the kind of example that you want to have in your life, I want to remind you, Heavenly Father is your father, is your mother. Dear Lord, I pray, especially for fathers today. Lord, I pray that you would give them strength to become like Heavenly Father. Me included, Lord, we all have failed. We live in this human flesh. Forgive us, Lord. These are reminders to all of us today that we be the kind of example that God wants us to be as fathers. Lord, I pray for children. Help them to honor their dads today. We don't get the honor today, I pray, Lord, that you would encourage the fathers to know that there is a person to whom we can turn everything to. That is the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that every one of us would be able to say like Norman Swartzkopf, a father who loved his family, a soldier who served his country. And I would add to that, a person washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Help us to say that. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Fathers, if you're not a Christian, please call me, email me, talk to me. Children, if you, if you do not have a good memory of your dad, call me. We can pray together. Or just go and hug your dad today and tell him how much you're grateful for your dad. Have a wonderful Father's Day. Until we meet again next Sunday, the same time, 1030. May the Lord bless you, protect you, guide you. Enjoy this day. Honor your father.